The upgraded bone blowpipe is a weapon that is left in the shadows, for good reason. In this video we're going to talk about the weapon and why it's so bad. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Before I get into the video, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video for helping me fund my crippling tea addiction. Raid Shadow Legends Raid Shadow Legends is a turn-based RPG game where you can collect over 500 characters. And when I say 500 characters, I mean 500 unique characters, both visually and in terms of their playstyle. I've been playing Raid for a while now, and in my opinion, Kale is easily one of the strongest starting characters. I've been using him since day one, as this Dark Elf does not disappoint. He has two great area of effect abilities that are excellent for killing multiple enemies. And on top of that, he can place poison debuffs reliably, which makes him an awesome choice for fighting the clan boss in the early to mid game. If this sounds appealing to you, you can download the game on your mobile phone or on PC by using the link in the description below. And coming up throughout February, this month is absolutely stacked in terms of special events including tournaments and Valentine's Day events. And Raids recently released its biggest update ever being the Doom Tower. Now you don't have to take my word for this game as there are plenty of positive reviews on Reddit, Google Play and so on. And if you'd like to get a huge head start on Raid, all you have to do is use the link in the description below to receive 50,000 silver, 50 gems, mystery shards, an experience boost, refills, a clan boss key, and on top of all of that, a crazy good champion called the Executioner. You can find all of these rewards in your inbox after first launching the game for the next 30 days only. The upgraded blowpipe is a weapon I've seen some questions about in my comments section in the past few months. But really, most of the time, it's people asking why it isn't mentioned in the video. And to that I say, because it isn't relevant in the current meta. The blowpipe stats on paper are fairly good, since it has tier 90 accuracy at 2458, which is better than both the Wyvern crossbow and the decimation. Trust me when I say that accuracy is extremely important as I tested it with a Wyvern crossbow and I noticed a bunch of splashes on the racks or even on Aura and using Elder Overload salves. Higher accuracy 100% makes a difference at high level PVM like Nex, racks, and so on. The upgraded blowpipe deals poison damage twice as often as its passive at 50% damage per poison hit. This means for short fight durations, the added poison damage is definitely something that will add to your DPM. Now while testing the poison damage, I noticed a weird increase in amount of poison hit splats when using Cinder Banes and Weapon Poison++. Plus plus plus. I could be wrong here, but I believe the amount of hits increase if you're using Weapon Poison++ plus 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 and Cinder Banes, so the amount of poison procs. Without anything, I was getting around 13 to 15 procs per minute. With Cinder Banes and Weapon Poison++, plus plus plus, I was getting over 22 procs per minute. I can however confirm that using Weapon Poison++ plus 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 and Cinder Banes pretty much double the max hit of the Poison procs from around 250 to 500. This means that the average proc is going to be dealing in a lot more damage. The Blowpipe's Poison DPM ranges from 2700 at the base to around 8300 at the max on average. The Wyvern Crossbow on the same dummy with the same settings got around 17,400 poison damage with Weapon Poison++ plus 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 and Cinder Banes, being over double that of the Blowpipe, and I know there are some variables and I should have maybe tested this in Legacy perhaps as well, but it comes down to the Wyvern Crossbow has better poison damage, the only thing that the Blowpipe has over the Wyvern Crossbow is accuracy. As there's a couple of things that make the blowpipe even worse. First of all, you cannot use the criminal bolts or blackstone arrows. The criminal bolts are the biggest DPM increase for you as a ranged user and are extremely good for bossing. Next up is the range, and that is my biggest problem with this weapon. It only has a six tile range. That might not sound like it's that bad, and in some areas it doesn't necessarily matter, though in my opinion it really does matter and it is extremely noticeable as when I tested this weapon out, I just got frustrated with the fact that it only had 6 tile range. Say hello to the swordfish test. I, I just completely made that up by the way guys. It's not called the swordfish test, it isn't a thing. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. In all seriousness though, I placed these swordfish on the floor so that I could count the tiles after the video was recorded. As you can see, the Seren Godbow or the Wyvern Crossbow have a 9 tile range. If you were to switch that to Ascensions, you would see that you only have 7 tiles of range. And the Blowpipe has 6. 
Range is calculated by looking at your position, counting the tiles towards the target plus one, as the target is the final tile of range. So for the blowpipe, you can see five white boxes on screen and one red box being the sixth tile. Now you might not think that's a big difference, but wait until you see the difference between the SGB or the Wyvern crossbow and the blowpipe. Notice how my character moves forward after switching to the blowpipe. That's the amount of range you're going to be losing when using a blowpipe. Here's an image to help you understand what I mean, again, as a sort of summary. So as you can see, the blowpipe's range is really, really short. The Ascensions have seven, but it will do for the majority of the content in the game. There are a few scenarios where I personally switch to my SGB, because I don't yet have an ECB, because of the range. For example, when doing next, she has a habit of getting stuck sometimes. In the final phase, when she's using Soul Split, I also tend to kite her around. At raids it can be nice, at the ambassador spinners it can be nice, but it isn't required of course, but it's useful to have, and this is an opinion, not a fact, having extra range sometimes can be quite nice. Having too little range with the blowpipe for example is however quite frustrating. Let's talk about a few bosses where I tested this blowpipe out, shall we? First of all, a boss where you might see this weapon being used, Queen Black Dragon. Now, at the start of the fight, it really isn't a big deal to use this weapon, but if you want fast kills of Queen Black Dragon, what you try to do, usually, is move around when attacking Queen Black Dragon, moving towards those artifacts before you actually need to activate them, so that when you just finish off the phase, you're able to activate them straight away. And I noticed the awful six tile range straight away. It is very obvious, and this might just be a personal thing where I do the Queen Black Dragon this way, and you might not do that, but the faster you click the artifact, the easier the fight is going to be. Right after activating an artifact though, you immediately realize that the range is again hindering your damage or the speed of your kill, because you have to run back to the Queen Black Dragon before you can use your weapon. With weapons that have more range, you're going to be able to attack Queen Black Dragon a lot sooner. Now you might say, hey, you could use Surge, right? And yes, that's correct but if you don't have double surge or mobile on your gear or perhaps a bladed dive switch you're going to have to run back to Queen Black Dragon at some point when activating those artifacts. In my opinion it's a major hindrance at this boss and I would not recommend using a blowpipe here whatsoever. At Araxor, the absolute horrid range is less apparent simply because you don't really need that range, especially not in Phase 1 and Phase 4. And the blowpipe itself works excellent at Araxor thanks to the high accuracy which is very important for a boss like Araxor. And the difference in accuracy is definitely noticeable straight away when compared to the Wyvern Crossbow. But the Wyvern Crossbow has those Bacrimina bolts, which add to the damage, which kind of makes up for the lack of accuracy. In Phase 3, however, that's when you notice the range difference, especially if you want to put Araxor in a better position for the minion spawns, or during Darkness Path, or Bottom Path, having to run to the light when it's dark can sometimes, depending on where it spawns, be a big hindrance, especially because it takes a bit for Raxor to move to your position so that you can stand there even with 6 tile range. I feel like it's a bigger problem when Darkness Path is open simply because you will have to run towards the light. With Path 2 and 3 I only see it being a problem when you want to put Araxor in a certain position for the minion spawns. At next during the shadow phase I like to run around to avoid next as much as possible allowing you to usually soul split but I found that with this range of the blowpipe, I was literally sometimes getting dragged into Nexus shadow traps, which is something you don't want to happen. Also, attacking the minions from afar is nice, especially if you have greater ricochet and roaming, by the way, because then Nex won't stand close to the minion and steal one of the hits from greater ricochet, which will speed up your kills. Now, doing next without the criminal bolts and less range is 100% noticeable to anyone who has some experience at next. Sometimes you're able to get next down before she does the blood sacrifice, but because you're standing so close, it takes like two seconds for her to heal up. I guess that's more of a small inconvenience, it just came to my attention. As for the final phase, I like to kite next around. This allows me to barely use food and sometimes even soul split, especially if she's in melee mode. Now, with the blowpipe, it's just... It's annoying to do unless she is in melee mode and close to you. She still gets stuck and you won't be able to attack. It sometimes cancels out your ability completely, removing it from your bar, putting on a cooldown without you having done any damage. I noticed this happening with Snapshot a few times and it's just really annoying, especially if you like doing next in a certain way. Now, you of course, don't need to kite next in the final phase. 
only when she's using soul split because then she heals off of you and there's no point in standing still because it's just going to make the fight longer it's a no from me now to wrap this video up i'd like to say that the blowpipe on paper is a good weapon and if it is like 10 million gp which it isn't because it's like 50 to 60 mil it might be a good option until you get yourself a wyvern crossbow, but you might as well just get glaives because you have that versatility with chinchompas, or get yourself chaotic crossbows instead because those can use the criminal bolts. There's one thing I'd like to mention, and it's not something I'm going to go in depth into because it's niche and it isn't relevant for the majority of players watching this video, and that is that when keepsaking the blowpipe and a couple of other weapons like javelins and darts, you're able to attack a tick faster, which can be good when wanting to phase a boss quicker. Now, I can't really explain this well because I have no personal experience with this, but the PVME Discord does have a page covering this, and I do have a clip here from Base Tank where he shows that the blowpipe just allows him to pop off his mutated daging shot one tick earlier, allowing him to phase Raksha. Otherwise, he would have phased Raksha and then his hits from his rapid fire wouldn't have gone through. Because as you see, he phases him right now and now he's going to be using his rapid fire. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.